very SG-like. It's got P90s. I think it's a little bit under the radar, this. Not necessarily a familiar shape to a lot of people. When this guitar was launched in 1959, probably pretty much on par with, with what we've got here now. There's nothing shoddy about it. It's a really good reproduction of what they were making. You know, and it's not expensive. So, yeah, what's not to love? Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. So today, another affordable guitar. It is this, Epiphone Wilshire. It's Wilshire, no T in that, Wilshire without a T, okay? So this is from a range of original Epiphones that they reissued in 2019, I think it was. Uh, there was, of course, the Coronet, and this, the Wilshire, and the Crestwood. Crestwood Custom, I think they called it, didn't they? All original, original Epiphone designs. Not inspired by Gibson, inspired by original Epiphones. Uh, in fact, real bang on, <laughs> real bang on good copies, actually. Now, I wasn't convinced that this, the, the Wilshire in particular, was actually an original design. But um, apparently it was, 1959 they released this. Symmetrical design, meaning, you know, same both sides, you know. You know what symmetrical means, don't you? It's got a symmetry to it. This was in 1959, uh, original, like this. Look, there's the picture. Proof, see? With the uh, stop bar tail piece and the tunematic bridge and the twin P90 soak bar pickups. It's exactly the same. And they, they changed this design in 1963 to the asymmetrical design but yeah it's it's great it's it's um it's a hugely affordable recreation of of the original one of the great things about this range of original epiphone reissues is, is i think that it does it, you know adds credibility to the brand who let's be honest are probably better known by many as just the the cheaper version of Gibson's. But, you know, that's, that couldn't be further from the truth. Epiphone were around before Gibson, and Gibson bought them in the 50s, I can't remember the date, but, you know, they have been making their own original guitars, like the Casino, and the Sheraton, and the, um, the Riviera, etc. I can't think of any more off the top of my head. Ever since, to see them reissue you know, these, these kind of things is, is fabulous. One of the other great things is they're hugely affordable. This retails for £439 in the UK. Uh, but, yeah, but, and there's a big but, those crazy cats at Gack in Brighton are selling it for £299 at the moment. Uh, I'll put some links in the description box. You might want to grab one of them. Um, Sweetwater. $499 in the US. So, it, you know what? It's a pretty cheap guitar. But, and there's an even bigger but, I didn't pay $499 or £439 or £299. I bought this used, <laughs> very lightly used, I might add, for 200 quid. <laughs> 200 quid, can you believe? So, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapped. As they say in Australia, I think, um, a 200 quid <laughs> guitar with P90s uh, and a fabulous brand name like Epiphone. What's not to love? What we're going to do is we're going to have a closer look at this today, as we always do. We're going to 
poke it around, measure it up, yeah, and all that stuff, unscrew some bits and pieces and then screw them back. And, um, and we'll have a good old play. Yeah, we'll have a play and we'll see what it sounds like and then um, we'll come back and we'll talk about it. Now, don't forget, <laughs> I go on a little bit. If, if that's not for you, timestamps are all in the description box. So if you just want information, you can skip right forward to that. Hear what it sounds like or see what the neck measurements are or whatever. It's all there, okay? If, however, you like to watch a, an idiot ramble on and get confused, go get a drink and then come back and join me for the ride. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so all about the guitar. It's a mahogany body. It's a mahogany neck. Mahogany set neck, as you can see. And it's a medium C-shaped neck. Okay, so it's not a, an Epiphone D. Uh, a lot of you will know what that means and go, oh, good. Yeah, it's quite a nice, it feels quite wide. We'll measure it in a bit, but it, it's a 43 mil nut. I know that much at this point, but yeah, it feels okay. It's got an Indian laurel fingerboard, medium jumbo frets. Um, we'll get to closer look at those in a bit. Graftech Newbone Nut, um, Epiphone Deluxe Tuners. Obviously, based on the Cluson Deluxe tuners with the nice white or ivory buttons. Handcrafted in China, this one, as all Epiphones are now, I think, aren't they? Uh, oh, yeah, and the, um, the bikini badge, bikini logo. I think that's cool. I don't think that was on the original. It might have been in some of them. I do love the look of this guitar. It's got this tortoiseshell pit guard, and they call this a butterfly shape. And it's got the, obviously the foil E logo in the middle. Uh, twin soap bar P90s, which we'll, we'll talk about in a minute. Tunematic, ABR1 style, Tunematic Epiphone Lock Tone. Is it Tone Lock or Lock Tone? Lock Tone, I was right. And um, stop bar, tail piece, nickel plated. Two volume, two tone. Top hat knobs with nickel inserts. Three way switch. Nice cream switch tip. Um, that's pretty much that really, isn't it? Um, ebony, obviously ebony, poly finish. So the, you know, in terms of the finish, you know, you're unlikely to see any blemishes on that which is either a good or a bad thing whatever your um your point of view you know a guitar like this is a nice it's, it's a cheap guitar proper little workhorse you know you're not going to be scared to do anything with it you know if you if you drop it it probably won't even ding i think that's pretty much got it all covered what we can see so we're going to take the strings off now and uh, we'll have a deeper dive look and a poke around. But before we do that, let's weigh it. Okay, it's definitely a lightweight guitar. So what am I guessing today? Seven? Mm. Oh, six pound ten. It's a nice weight. Uh, yeah, just over three kilograms. Cool. Okay, so a closer look at the fingerboard. Uh, as I said, this is Indian laurel. Uh, it looks uh, looks pretty. It looks pretty decent. And this this is a used guitar, so I don't know whether or not it's been treated. I doubt it has. Didn't look like it. Didn't look like it's hardly been played, to be honest with you. The frets are reasonable. I say reasonable. I don't think there's anything to... I'm not going to get excited about them because I can... I can feel them. I, can, I don't know if people would say they're sharp. They're not sharp or sticky out as far as I'm concerned, but I can feel the edges when I do that. I'm not sure if I had ladder my tights on that. Um, 
But I mean, for my money, <laughs> which was 200 quid, <laughs> they're perfectly acceptable. And even if it was 400 quid, I'd say that's, that's perfectly acceptable. There's nothing shoddy about this. And, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, it's been played. I mean, I've been playing this for the last three or four days and I haven't had any, any issues with fret buzz or there's nothing, there's no dead spots. I mean, I don't, I can't remember how many guitars that's ever happened to me on since I've been doing this, two or three maybe, you know. So it's not very common nowadays. I think certainly, you know, the factories that make Epiphone guitars know how to put frets on. Um, and I rarely see them falling out or, or cutting my hands. I know people say that they do, but I mean, I honestly, I don't know. I think it depends how fussy you are. You know, if you buy a guitar like this and you start examining it under a microscope, you might, you might find things to complain about if you're looking for them, but I guarantee you'd, you'd find more issues with a, <laughs> an expensive Gibson. <laughs> Decent job. New band nut, as I said. I mean, always well cut. I just noted as well, it's got the a period correct bushings in the tuners, which I like. It's a little detail that makes a lot of difference. As opposed to having nuts on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the neck measurements and profile. Okay, here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. As you can see, is a definite C shape. Epiphone branded nickel plated tailpiece, standard 72 grams. And AB01 style bridge, feels quite light. Oh, it's six grams. I think these are pretty standard across the whole range. Now these are soap bar P90s. As you can see, these are screwed directly to the body. And um, they've got spring or foam underneath. So what I'm gonna do is just remove the pit guard first. There you go. Could have just left that on, couldn't I? So, uh, yeah, so let's, um, so you'll just see these have got these really long screws. What I mean, they go directly into the wood. Oops, covers come off. Longer screws in that one. So there you go, that's that's really all there is to see in there. A couple of P90 shaped holes with a bit of foam. And uh, it's the foam stepped, actually. That's, uh, that's interesting, isn't it? They've stepped the foam, obviously, so that the, the treble side will be higher than the bass side. Because um, that's generally how you do it, isn't it? Uh, and obviously springs as well to add extra pressure, you know. Uh, P90 soap bar pickups, and I've forgotten already what the rest of the stuff means. Someone did explain it, just gone completely. I'm looking for um, for obvious reminders, but I can't, I can't, 
I can't think. I can't think what BP is off the top of my head. Uh, it will sink in eventually. Obviously N for neck, B for bridge. Uh, let's take some readings. Okay, let's start on the neck. All controls on 10. We've got 7.9 kilo ohms. Inductance is reading 5.75 Henry's. There's been a question of whether or not those inductance readings are, are actually correct, because they seem a little bit high, but I don't know. I just thought I'd mention that there's a question mark over that. Uh, bridge pickup, 7.94 kilo ohms, or I'm reading, again, 5.75 Henry's, which seems quite high, but it, it, it may be meant to be like that. I don't know. There you go. All right, well, that's the readings. Oh, and let's just take a middle reading. Uh, 3.96 kilo ohms. Let's pop these back and then we'll we'll delve into the control cavity. So there you go, inside that control cavity, we have uh, clearly marked CTS parts, 500K, braided wire, and um, plug-in pickups, and a, a switchcraft type switch. There you go. Oh, and nice bit of shielding on the cover. Let's have a look under the truss rod cover. We'll try and look down the hole. It's the standard, it's the standard uh, Allen wrench type truss rod. <laughs> uh, it's dual action truss rod in this, dual action, which means it works both ways. I think I'm right in saying. So there you go. All right, well, we'll, we'll pop that back on. We'll pop a new set of strings on, and then we'll see what it sounds like. See you in a minute. Here we are, new strings, all plugged in and ready to go. Today, we're using the Harley Benton Tube 15 again, because I like it. I mucked around with a couple of amps. I, try, I thought we'd use the Fender Super Reverb today. It wasn't, was, wasn't happening straight away. You know, too powerful, you know, too clean. I want a bit of, you know, crunch. Tried the Vox AC15, that was okay. Bit, I thought, a bit too chimey and bright for this guitar. So I, I plugged in the Harley Benton and straight away, boom, we're there. Okay, and it sounds like this on the neck bridge pickup. Obviously you can clean it up by picking less hard. And on the neck. Thick and throaty, a little bit woolly maybe. Let's see if the uh, tone control works. Before we do that, let's go middle. So I think what we will find is... Yeah, I was mucking around earlier. They seem to be quite... Sensitive and interactive. Bit 
of scratch. Yeah, I think there's quite a lot of possibilities there. Potential, shall we say. I like me big muff on the bridge neck. <laughs> We'll muck around with that in a minute, but tone controls work. mucking around because I wasn't really feeling it with this neck pickup so I've actually just swapped the board around a little bit I've just put the soul food on and taken the spark booster off because the spark booster wasn't wasn't giving it the kick up the arse that I was looking for so <laughs> Thank you. 
have it. That's the Epiphone Wilshire. I'm really pleased I bought this. Uh, it's funny, it's been out for a couple of years and I've, I've thought about it a few times, but I just didn't for some reason. I think it was because I didn't think it was a, an original, a proper reissue. Like the Coronet, I bought this the minute it was it was out because I knew that it was a a good a, a reproduction of the of the vintage coronet which I'd always wanted. This is one of the first guitars that I reviewed here on this channel when I started doing the talking about eighteen months ago, and I've still got it. And I shall keep this one too um, because it's a lovely little guitar. It's it's a pleasure to play. You know, it's got everything going for it. It's got it's light, like six pound ten ounces. It's got um, upper fret axis. I mean, it, you know, it's it's very SG like, so you can see, you know, why, you know, why it works for me because I love SGs. Obviously, you got all this upper fret axis. It's got P nineties, <laughs> best pickups ever, in my humble opinion. The electronics on this seem to work surprisingly well. It was all pretty, it was all pretty interactive. I felt, I it felt interactive. It felt better than normal. Yeah, it felt like a really good wiring loom. And I don't know if maybe this was just a particularly good set of CTS pots or it was a combination of the things, you know. The pickups themselves, I don't think, didn't strike me as being remarkable. They were okay, but as you know, as you saw in the film, I was trying to get a little bit more bite from the neck. It might need a little bit more fiddling around, adjusting. But um, I mean, it might be worth you know tinkering with this and uh, and maybe changing those for for something else. I think it's a little bit under the radar. This people don't really know what it is, do they? It's not a, not necessarily a familiar shape to a lot of people. They don't really know what it is. I didn't really know what it was until I until I got this. As I said, I didn't think it was a a kind of a, a correct reissue of of something properly vintage, and I'm delighted to discover it is because that makes makes quite a difference actually to me. I think that. You know, when this guitar was launched in 1959, it's probably pretty much on par with, with what we've got here now. It's a really good reproduction of what they were making. It's not, you know, and it's not expensive. So, yeah, what's not to love? Um, another keeper, and of course now, now I've got two of the three, I'll probably have to go and get um, the Crestwood Custom as well, won't I? In fact, I've wanted one of those uh, more than I've wanted this for the last two years. I don't really know how I've managed to um, resist getting one, to be honest with you. So that's it. Another affordable guitar review under my belt. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, come back next week and find out what we're up to then. I don't know at the moment, to be honest with you, so I'm going to go away, have a little lie down, and, uh, and we'll work something out. So come back next week, same time, same place, and um, I look forward to that. Try for now.
Thank <laughs> you.